Alright guys, welcome to your 72nd, wow, we've come a long way, C++ tutorial, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be talking to you guys about some more very useful string functions. So the very first string function I want to talk to you guys about is called the substring function. Now what the substring function does is it takes a big string and it creates a substring out of, you know, a small piece of it. So let me go ahead and show you guys an example. It's going to be a lot easier just to show you an example rather than trying to explain it. So go ahead and make a string. I'm going to call, actually I'm probably going to call all my strings S1 in this tutorial. And just go ahead and write something like OMG I think I am preggy or something stupid like that. I don't know. Create any string you want. And uh, go ahead and print out S1 dot S U B S T R. This is a substring function. And go ahead and end that line. End L. Now the substring function takes two parameters. The first parameter it takes is the beginning index or the beginning character. Remember, strings are arrays, it's pretty much an array of characters. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. So let me go ahead and put the beginning character which is 17 and the next parameter it takes is how many characters do you want to go on for so if we put one five it would start at one and it would go five characters in so let's go ahead and put 17 7 go ahead and run this and we get the word preggy with explanation point one two three four five six seven actually zero one two three four Five, six, I don't know. It's one or the other. But anyways, the substring method is basically what character do you want to begin in? And this is the 17th character. And if we count seven characters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that is how many characters is included in the substring. So basically, the substring function is how to create a smaller string from a bigger string. Definitely useful whenever, well, whenever you want to create a smaller string from a bigger string. Now after this, I want to teach you guys about another function and that's called the swap function. Now this is might be if you're working a lot with sorting list or how to sort arrays, you're going to be using this function a ton. What it basically does is it takes one string and swaps it with another string. So let's go ahead and put string 1 and we'll make this one, make it something that begins with A like apples. And we'll put string 2 and what this one does is we'll make this one like beans good enough and what we can do first is just print out the strings to verify that they are indeed working correctly so one and then we'll print out two and we'll go ahead and end that line so what this line is going to print out apples beans and I'll add a space after this and now what we can do is I want to show you guys what the swap function is and how it works the first thing you need is a string to apply it to and I'm gonna apply it to string one now go ahead and call swap on this now it always needs to take a parameter and that's what string do you want to swap with it and we want to sh swap string two with it so we're basically saying alright swap beans with apples and now string one contains beans and string two contains apples so if you go ahead and print this out again let me just go ahead and copy it and print it out again and build and run it the original strings were apples and beans, but now it took the contents or values of them and flip-flopped them. So now string 1 contains beans and string 2 contains apples. Again, this is very useful whenever you're sorting. Um, usually you're going to run through a huge while loop and you're going to be like, alright, if this value is greater than this value, then swap them. If not, leave them the same. And by the end by the time you get to the end of the loop everything's in a nice neat order so that's your basic of you know how to sort things but um, again let's go ahead and delete this and again one last time none of these things are really confusing but they're definite functions that we need to know that's why I'm gonna be covering this explicitly because these are functions that you should definitely shouldn't have to look up in a you know resource or reference guide these should be functions that should be stuck in your brain so the last function I want to cover in this tutorial is the find function. Now like I said, I want to repeat this one last time, strings are just arrays of characters. So whenever we're finding a substring, what it's going to do is it's going to give us the location, or in other words the index, 
of where in the string that is. So let me go ahead and make a string. Again, most of these, it's going to be a lot easier just to see an example. So let me go ahead and make something like ham is spam. Oh, yes, I am. And I actually made that string for a very specific reason, which you'll see later on. So go ahead and see out s1.find am. And now, let me go ahead and end that line. And you're saying, all right. So I kind of know what this is going to do already. It's going to go and look through your string and find where am is. But check it out. We have this one right here and this one right here and this one right here. So let's go ahead and build and run this and see what one it returns. And I forgot to do something and add a less than sign right there. So let's go ahead and build and run this again. And it's going to say 1. So you're saying, all right. So obviously it gave me the location of this first one right here because this is the zeroth index of this array and this is one. So what it basically does is it gives you the starting location of the first found um, the first found AM I guess that's all I need to say the first found occurrence that's the word I was looking for. So even though there are three occurrences in this string it's going to loop through it and it's only going to return to you the first occurrence of this. So remember that whenever you're using find, it doesn't give you, you know, 1 and 10 and 19 or whatever the heck these are. So they're saying, all right, well, what if I want the occurrence of the last am? Well, there's another function for that and that's called rfind. This stands for reverse find. You know how whenever you're finding, uh, you know, a substring such as am in a bigger string is going to start at the beginning and it's going to work left to right. Well, what reverse find does is it works right to left just like that and it's going to go right to left and it's going to look for am. So it's basically going to give you the last occurrence of am, which let's go ahead and print this out and that is 21. So if we can see this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 80, 21, right like that. As you can see, this 21st index, in other words, this one right here, is the first location of the last AM. So that's the difference between fine and R fine. One works left to right, and one works right to left. So there are some more string functions right there. Again, these string functions are functions that you should not have to look up. These are some functions that should be embedded in your programming brain. So that's why I want to give them to you guys and hopefully me showing you an example of how they work help you know make them stick in your brain a little bit easier. So thank you guys for watching these tutorials. We only have a few more string functions to cover, but don't skip over these tutorials because later on when I'm developing games and uh, showing you guys how to work with 3D and cool stuff like that, I'm not going to be taking time to stop and pause and cover these functions. So if you know you decide to skip these next tutorials and just go straight to game development or whatever, you're going to be crap out of luck. So there you go. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to check out all my other videos. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys later.